you know, we've been talking about Paul, but he is he's far from the only one. You already alluded to the fact that the other apostles, um, with the exception of John, all died for the sake of the gospel. And they were, once again, the first of many. You know, we see that Stephen was martyred for the gospel, an incredibly inspiring story, also in Acts, that you should totally read. But throughout history since then, there have been so many martyrs and their stories. Their utility for us today is not only that we remember them and the sacrifice that they made, but that they take our pitiful excuses and they throw them in the trash. These people who were tortured, who were imprisoned, who were killed for the sake of the gospel. It's like, well, I would go share, I would share the gospel with my friend, but that might be awkward. Tell that to Jim Elliott, right? Right. What do you think he would say to you? It's not supposed to be fun. In fact, it's supposed to be um, it's supposed to be a trial. It's supposed to be tribulation. And Jesus warned us about this. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Um, Luke also says you will be hated for my name's sake. And that's the thing that we fear the most. It's the reason we don't. We are. We want the approval of men right we want to be in that clique we want to be accepted and when we are scorned you know i would dare say it is probably the thing we fear the most is being ostracized from friends and from the culture yes and not being the favored person but i mean you just read it if it's it's not that people are hating us is that they hate Christ That's right. that is living in us. Mm-hmm. Don't take it personally mm-hmm. uh, if people treat you that way or don't want you to be around because they're afraid you're going to say something about the gospel that's going to bring condemnation on them or make them feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Jesus made people uncomfortable in what he had to say. And, you know, it doesn't mean we go around beating people over the head with, with the Bible mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. you know, just constantly putting condemnation on people. That's not what we're talking about. But we are talking about sharing the truth in a loving way. It is loving to share the truth with people, to, yes. to cause them to realize their own separation from God. I mean, that is a loving act. Absolutely. And if I could just provide some scriptural support to what you're saying. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify about it that its works are evil. And then later on, he says, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. It's not that they hate you. It's that they hate the spirit of Christ in you. Right? Exactly. And if they don't hate you, what does that mean? I would say that it means you're quenching that spirit which we are commanded not to do. Now, if we could just share a few more things as we uh, wrap up here. There is a positive side to all of this. You know, as you said, the hatred of the world, the shame, the dishonor that is bound to be applied to us if we preach the gospel is what we fear the most. But again, if you look in Acts, when the gospel was first going out into all the world, I believe there's a scene in Acts where Paul and uh, his partner are beaten because of sharing the gospel. And you think at the end of that, they're going to be thinking, man, I, I don't think this is for me. I think I need a new line of work. No, they said they considered it an honor that they were worthy 
mm-hmm. to suffer for the sake of Christ. It's, it's not just something we have to tolerate. It's an honor for us um, because of what it means about Christ having chose, chosen us out of the world. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Um, blessed are you if you're persecuted because so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Um, rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. Amen. In heaven. Right. And, you know, everything that you have just read over the last few minutes runs counter to the idea I keep using the phrase your best life now, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I mean, that was obviously a popular (laughs) book, Uh, but everything you're saying runs counter to that. And that's why we don't like it. We don't read those passages a lot. We don't want to bring persecution upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. We do not Mm -hmm. want all the things that you just read to to happen. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to preach that to others, basically saying, this is what could happen to you too. But, Shift your view from now to eternity. Mm. So we really need to take a hard look mm. at what we're what we're doing uh, from an evangelism standpoint, what we're preaching, how we're living, and certainly we do not mm. want the blood of others on our hands at the at the end. So. Mm.